Most of the prolific Mr. Developers use some kind of simulation to speed up their development process. Uh, I'm helping Jamie with the 2600 detection code. We're going to put this definitely in the 7800 and maybe in the 2600. We'll see. The current 2600, let's take a quick look at the code here and detect 2600. This is the module I'm building and in this Verilator framework just uh, runs this module. I'll show you how in a second. But the old code in the current 2600, basically we had to, if we had an F6 mapper, we would have to change the name of the file to be .f6 and we would use a wildcard in the framework, which I can show you as well, to load this and then look in the extension came out of, I think, IO control underscore. There's some way to get the extension out of the framework. And then we would do it. And, and that's really annoying. The problem is the 2600 cartridges don't have a header with the mappers. Stella, they came through and wrote this code, which we really like, um, where they have this big if statement. And they look at the different sizes. And then they say is probably, let's say, SC or FC. So if we take a quick look at this function in C, we'll see that they basically have these bytes which correspond to the opcodes and they search heuristically search through the um, cartridge through RAM because they've loaded it in RAM because it's an emulator and then they, they match this. And if it's true, then they return true. If not, they say false. And so they go through and do all this heuristics. Uh, we I tried to write a little code to do the same thing. Here's my if statement. It's not as complicated, so it probably doesn't handle all of the cases. But instead of searching through memory, we pass in the address and the data from the IO control lines. So as we load the cartridge, we go and try to do this detection. And it should become valid like a cycle or two clock cycles after um, all of the bytes. And, and we'll take a look. So here's the 3F detector. Let's go back and say is probably probably 3F over here. Oh, did I do that wrong? I spelled something wrong. So if we look at the is probably 3F, where it's defined somewhere here, you'll see we're just looking for STA 3F. So 8, 5, and 3F, two bytes. And now we look at our 3F detector here, and I put in the pattern 8, 85 3F, two bytes, and it needs to be matched twice. And I didn't realize that when I first wrote this, but this last two means um, make sure it appears in the ROM twice. And this match bytes, I use it all the time. You can see here's the E7, here's the code from Stella. And then here, because there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I just made seven calls to this um, match bytes where I pass in these parameters. And you can see I just or them together. So if it matches E7, it's a little bit ugly. If we scroll to the bottom, we can take a look at the matcher. And here's the actual module I have that does this match bytes. And it basically just holds on to the pattern and looks at the last pattern and sees if it matches. And that's about it. And then it kind of resets in two ways. Jamie added a second reset. I was Whenever address came to zero, so you could load two cartridges, I was resetting it, but I guess there's also a reset signal now. So that's great. Okay, so that's fine. This is the module. I don't think it's quite correct yet. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was load it into Vera later, and let's take a look at that, so that we could write this Python script. And I'll show you the, let's start with the Python script. So we, I took this spreadsheet and I dumped it as a CSV. And I wrote a Python script that basically opens both that mapping file and then a file of MD5s and the paths to where they are on my hard drive. And it goes through and matches everything up, walks it, and then basically calls this VTOP. And that's the program that Verilator creates. So we'll take a look at that in a second. And it basically calls this and then parses all the stuff and then puts it in three files. Did it find it? It didn't find it. There's a match. It's incorrect. Um, let's take a look at what that. So we look at our files. Here's my mapper. So that's just that same spreadsheet. Um, we can take a look at 
this ROM checklist file I made, which is again the MD5 and then the path on my drive to the ROM. And then once we run it, we can see, you know, these are the ROMs that I don't have on my hard drive or that the MD5s don't match. These are all the ones that match and work great. And then we'll come back to that. And then these are the ones that are incorrect. But I think these 4K ones and 2K ones are just a bug because when I ls-l these files, they uh, are 4K, not 2K. I don't know. I'll have to look at that again. And then I have, so right now I have two that are failing. I have this dig dug and I have this decathlon and I'm a little confused about both. Okay, so how do we do this? We made, a, well, the basic code is we start with the sim main. This is a simple C++ program that pulls in the very related library and vtop.h, which comes from the very related command. And then here's the top is the very later module. And then I wrote some code a while ago to deal with the IO control. So I can send a file or ROM over the IO control signals. And then we have the bank types just to clean up our code. So the main Verilite, we call this once to do one cycle. And so we come in here and in the beginning, we have to set the reset signal and hold it high for a bit. And then each cycle through, we need to go and set the clock sys to zero, then one, then zero. And this has a video clock, but it's not correct. Um, it should be a smaller multiple of the clock. And I think having done a few of these, it's probably easier to generate the video clock in the Verilog than to do it in the C code and just send in one clock and then divide it if it's divisible. So right here, if we're on a one, then we evaluate the IO control. This eval is built into the class we got from Verilator and that runs one cycle. And then after the IO control download after is, is a little bit of code I wrote. And these two are so that we can send byte by byte through the IO control. And then this doesn't stop that way, but you can tell Verilator through command line, I believe, to run only so many cycles. And so if you do it, it calls final and deletes it and exits. But I don't think we're getting to that code. So here's my set file where we set the file, we, the ROM we want to send, um, download before where we set all of our IO control and write signals correctly, and then after where we start moving our addresses. Okay, the main is the big thing. So we instantiate VTOP, new, parse all those command arguments. Then we have to set the file to the file we pass in. And then basically we just go through and verilate. Now I did a little kind of cute hack here, which is I tell the verilator, I tell it in Verilog to set this done flag. And that way we know when we should exit. And that way this code runs really simply. So let's take a look at our test bench, which is in this dot V. And so here are the parameters we pass to the test bench and done is in there as well as that BS. And here we have it kind of in the old school module where we've separated out. And so here are the inputs and the outputs. And again, that done and the BS are outputs. Okay, so let's take a look. We basically, this module just calls our detect 2600. And then this code here is just some mostly work to debug things and to print out, to calculate our cart size, which we need. And then to print out what we found for the size and whether the SC was set. And we could probably pass those back out as parameters like we did the BS, but for some reason, I've got two printouts. I've got a display here, which is how you print in Verilog, which by the way, has to be done inside one of these clocks. So it can be a little bit confusing. It's not quite like C. And then the detect module, which we looked at, you know, we call here and it needs size. The other bug I had, if we go back to the tire Verilator is I needed three states here. I was originally setting done where I said almost done, but I was one cycle behind and I needed to give one more clock cycle to the detect so that the size would be correct for it to actually detect correctly. So once I added one more state, this comes out to be correct. Okay, so let's look at the make file real quickly. So V is Verilator. You have to have Verilator installed and in the path. And we can put the um, include directories. This is really old. I don't think I need this anymore. Um, actually, I don't think any of that's quite right. I think I just put the names in here. 
and they're in the current directory. So here's vSource, these are the two files we need. And then the C source, I have that sim main. And then it outputs top.cpp. So then we have this um, vSource. So we have two, two basic steps here. We use Verilator and we output that source. And then once we have that, then we use that source to create, we call this top.make and we build um, the binary. And let's take a quick look at that. So we'll type make. And by the way, the first time it'll error because there's a warning here. And we can either fix this warning or if it's only warnings, not errors, we can just type make again. Now this time it's going into that temp directory and it's building this vtemp. And it gave us some C++ warnings because I'm using C, I think. And it'll go and build all of the code it generated. Now, if we do temp v top, it'll run and it passes in a cart. So let's, if you remember, we can take an argument. So we'll go roms one. And let's see if we have combat. And combat comes out as a zero, which I think is correct. Let's do pitfall two, which is kind of a complicated one. Huh. Maybe. Uh, well, anyway, there are a lot of, uh, let's take a quick look. And this is a more complicated ROM and we get back F6. And this print comes from the display and this one from the C code. <clears throat> so in summary, this is a simple repo. And if you wanna copy this and try to run one of your own modules, you'll need the sim main and you'll need to modify it to pass the parameters that you wanna pass. Those, by the way, when it auto generates, I should show you the header that Verilator makes in a second. But basically, you'll need sim main. You'll want to change the make file around. And then you'll need um, a test bench. This Atari Verilator.v is our test bench. And then you'll want to call your module. And by the way, if we go into temp and say open up vtop.h, this is generated. And if you look here, the inputs and outputs in the class, the top class that are made. And all the input and outputs just become members. There's the IO control download, write, video, the RGB that we're not using. And it becomes really easy to call those inputs and outputs from your C code or C++ code. You can actually get to everything else through these really complicated things. And so you'll see in some of the other demos that we can go into a Z80 or a 68000 and we can put the PC and the all that and we can make it so it'll step through instruction by instruction and look more like a C debugger. Uh, and this is how you would do it, is you would just go and copy and paste out this whole this whole uh, string here, and then you can access it. But this is our, this is basically, there's some documentation you'll find in here. And, uh, and I, I think it'll be really interesting to go and do this. This is in, I've run this on my Mac. I've run it on Unix. I haven't yet done it on Windows, but I know it works. If someone wants to send me a PR for a Windows version or even make their own video showing how to make this work on Windows, that would be great. And thanks so much.